So in the previous video, we we established why our stress is a tensor. We saw how do we represent this tensor using the stress cube, and we also uh, tried to give a meaning to what the components of the stress tensor means. Okay. So in this video, we are going to understand the impact of the coordinate system. Okay. So all the components that we discussed were in the, on, throughout the series were defined with respect to a specific coordinate system. What if we change the coordinate system? We also saw that this is our way of representing physical properties and as we change references and the coordinate system, the component changes the pro but the property remains the same. Okay. So let's see the role of coordinate system. Okay. We know that the physical property doesn't depend upon the choice of the coordinate system. We have said this thing several times. Okay, so the components in our representation of physical properties as vector or matrices are coordinate dependent. Okay, the choice of the coordinate is up to us. Usually we choose those coordinate system that will help simplify things that will ease the uh, calculations and so on. For example, let us take the example of a vector. Oh, it is defined currently in this basis E1, E2 and v1 e and v2 e are the components of this vector v okay so we write v as v1 okay the projection of v along e direction v1 e and the projection of v along the direction e2 this is v2 e and a linear combination of this thing okay you you are actually making a linear combination of e1 and e2 some fraction of e1 plus some fraction of e2 let's make any every vector okay the only this component changes for any vector in this domain now for example if you if you change the basis if you rotate the basis like this okay in this case what happens so in this basis the component of v okay along this direction is now different okay this v1 f and this is v2 f you can see from the figure that v2 e is greater than v2 f okay you can also note that this vector are the same what you have changed is the coordinate system or the perspective in which you are seeing things okay so this is the new representation but the original vector will remain same okay similarly we can think of such kind of transformation for stresses which are nothing but second order tensors as well and the component is the nine components out of which only six are actually unique will change as change the coordinate system okay let's see let us bring back our Cauchy stress tensor now. Okay, so just wanted to discuss one thing that is not clear to us. Okay, so we introduced a stress cube. Okay, and uh, earlier we told we, we talked that the stress tensor provides information about traction in all possible orientation, right? But when we introduced a stress cube, we said that the components of the stress tensor represent the component of the traction vector on specific plane perpendicular to a basis vector in a specific direction along a basis vector so there are two directions right that's what that's why it, it is a tensor okay and in a coordinate system okay please read this paragraph again if you if you can and try to make sense of it so but we talked uh, uh, about the information about uh, uh, infinite orientation side so what happened to this infinite orientation the the uh, it seems that the stress cube or the tensor only contains information about uh, in the planes that are perpendicular to the basis vectors in which that uh, in which you are dealing okay so where's the catch okay this is this was the representation of the stress cube that we discussed and these components were defined on these only these three perpendicular planes to e1 e2 and e3s so what about all possible orientations the catch is this when you represent a orient, uh, stress tensor in a coordinate system, its component will be the traction vector on the planes perpendicular to the basis. Okay, that's clear. The components will be what you see in the picture. Okay, this doesn't mean it doesn't contain information about the traction in infinite orientation. Okay, we know that this is a transformer. It takes an input vector n, okay, and gives out your traction. Okay, so in that case, if you input any n, okay, so you'll get it will give you traction in any plane. Okay, it's just that by using 
uh, the representation a 3 by 3 matrix you get a direct information okay by just looking at the components you can get the traction on these three planes okay that's you are getting direct information but for any other uh, uh, direction like any arbitrary direction of the unit vector you need to do that matrix transformation on that vector n okay just multiply the uh, 3 by 3 matrix uh, the stress matrix with the normal vector and you'll get the traction okay so uh, i think you get it what i wanted to say okay so from the comp you can directly get the components from the matrix these these components okay these components you can get directly get from the matrix but for other components in other direction different from the basis vector directions you you need to perform th that matrix operation okay so that the thing that we wanted from this tensor or or, uh, or the Cauchy stress tensor that it represent traction in all the possible direction or behavior around a particle in all the possible direction is still preserved okay so and it contains all the required information in sense of transformation okay in some sense how it transforms the way it transforms the information is contained in there okay now we want to look at two different picture of this coordinate transformation we talked about as we change the coordinates the component changes right we'll say we'll see two ways how, uh, in which we can evaluate this traction on an arbitrary plane point right we wanted uh, we, we saw the matrix operation method that we have been discussing discussing throughout this uh, series so let us see what these two pictures are okay the picture one this one we know that that's what we have been discussing we simply used the sigma n okay let us for this explanation uh, for explaining things just use the 2d example in which we are interested in finding stresses at point p okay and even it were the basis okay and on the planes this and this actually this planes passes through p but if you uh, just simply draw it like passing through p it will you will only, only get a plus and it will be it will be very difficult to represent things that's why we represent a square similarly in a cube if you uh, for stress cube if you can see the, the planes actually pass through the point but if you make them pass through the point then uh, they are just three planes intersecting each other so it's very, it will be very uh, like very difficult to represent things so we, th this way is very neat but remember these planes are passing through the point p although they are they are drawn a bit dif uh, a bit away from this point okay so consider this stress square which is basically a stress cube in 2d and these are the components again let me explain what sigma 2 1 is sigma 2 1 is you are observing on plane 1 okay plane 1 is perpendicular to e1 the component along the direction 2 which is direction 2 the sigma 2 whose component tractions component okay so if you make sigma 2 1 and sigma 1 1 actually combine with the basis vector to represent tech traction on this plane 1 okay on this plane 1 now so if sigma is something like this you know that and you want to find the traction vector on this plane n what you do you just write n in this coordinate system okay like n is equals to n1 e1 plus n2 e2 you can write that okay simply as a vector a geometric vector and you can use this Cauchy's relation Cauchy's stress theorem to calculate the traction on this plane very simple so the traction on this plane would look something like this or you can write in the expanded form or well-known form uh, like this okay a linear combination of even e2 with these things as weights right so this is the traction vector on the plane normal to n expressed okay in basis e so everything is expressed with respect to e and as you change the basis these components will change right now this is the picture that we are getting okay so this was the traction so uh, instead of drawing the cube i'm just i've just drawn a single plane right this plane now, i can draw single plane because I'm not drawing two so not making things ugly here so just drawing a single plane is okay so i've drawn this plane of interest n so this was a traction okay so this component this projection of uh, uh, the uh, traction vector on e1 axis is this one sigma 1 1 n1 plus sigma 1 2 n2 and the projection on the e2 axis is sigma 2 1 n1 and sigma 2 2 n2 right so that's what we did this is a picture one as a matrix transformation or a matrix operation 
right now let us look at picture 2 so in this method what we are going to do is we are going to transform the stress tensor okay and we use that component of the stress tensor that it gives the traction on the basis planes in the basis direction so that's what we talked that uh, on the stress cube you can directly without any matrix operation you can directly see the values okay so what if we uh, orient our stress cube or stress square in such a way that the local coordinate system e1 e2 e3 aligns with the direction in which you want to calculate this attraction okay for example this okay that's what we wanted to do so somehow if you rotate this uh, 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 stress square such that this one of the local axis e1 or e2 of for this aligns with n okay like this so now your f2 now aligns with n right so now you can directly get the components of your traction on this plane right which are nothing but sigma 2 2 and sigma 1 2 for, for this plane note that this second index 2 represent the plane so we you what you want now is traction the, uh, the component of the traction on the second plane which you will directly get from the uh, matrix right so this is how you have somehow you could represent the sigma in this new coordinate system you can directly see the values okay but uh, the only thing that we didn't discuss is how to get to how to get to this transformed matrix sigma okay so that's the catch both things are the same so you need to you need to do some operation on sigma okay so to get to this this sigma right so in a way you are doing the transformation or the matrix operation and then you are reading the values okay so in this case the tn is sigma 1 sigma dash 1 2 or sigma dash 2 2 or you can write is at in this coordinate system with f1 and f2 as the basis vectors as this expression okay so we st yeah we still don't know how to do this transformation okay so uh, we very shortly we'll see how are we going to do this transformation we won't be going very deep into this thing so just just very uh, just scratching the surface so sigma e okay in a basis e we are representing all the components in a second uh, some rotated arbitrarily rotated uh, basis uh, we, we represent it as sigma f okay so these are the components in this basis f basis and e basis okay now the transformation matrix q the coordinate transformation matrix q is defined as this the dot product between the, this f1 e1 and f2 e2 all fi and f fi and eis are nothing but the basis vectors for the f basis and e basis respectively okay there are three bases that's why we have one two and three so what is f f1 dot e1 it is nothing but the projection of f1 okay if you if you for in example you have, if, if you're in space e1 and you draw vector f1 okay then the then the projection of f1 on e1 vector is what it is or simply the angle between f1 and e1 okay cosine of the angle between f1 e1 f1 e2 f1 e3 this actually generates the coefficient transformation matrix and the transform matrix sigma f would be nothing but q into sigma e into the q transpose we are not going to derivation of this but simply remember this how can how we can transform and this is a transformation that is required to directly see the values in the matrix okay we just rotate the matrix in such a way that one of the plane any one of the plane aligns with the, the plane in which you want to calculate the traction perform this kind of uh, transformation and directly see the values and you get the traction the component component of the tractions uh, on that plane okay so that's it for this video in this video what we discussed how to manipulate the components how to directly read the the, the components of the traction vector from the stress matrix and also uh, it actually involves some kind of coordinate transformation to directly read it on any plane n and we saw two different pictures which are essentially the same thing you are doing uh, uh, the, i mean nothing no, no one of them is superior 
so uh, someone some of uh, any one of them could be easy to implement uh, um, when you when you're trying to code these things and uh, actually the second one is easier to code uh, for any arbitrary rotation of uh, your uh, coordinate system so uh, you can do it where th- there is lot of things like rotation matrix and all you can represent uh, any arbitrary uh, coordinate system we, we are not going to into much deep into that you just remember that there are two ways that we we could calculate traction on uh, on, an, on a random surface and arbitrary surface one was that we studied earlier that is a matrix transformation other was the coordinate transformation okay yeah so that's it for this video in the next video we are going to study how this uh, uh as you transform this matrix okay uh, this how as you make this coordinate transformation some interesting things start to happen okay there are some s- interesting planes okay uh, where which are special spe- spe- special orientations of the coordinate system and you start to see things uh, special things so we'll discuss those things in the next video uh, thank you for your time and uh, please subscribe if you liked these series of videos thank you